Now, you've all probably heard the story of Bernadette Spofforth. She was arrested on the 8th of August on suspicion of stirring up racial hatred and sending false communications after she was accused of sharing incorrect information on the identity of the Southport killer on X. Despite adding the caveat to the post, if this is true, and deleting the tweet when she discovered the information was false, Spofforth was arrested and held in custody for 36 hours. This week, Bernadette shared that Cheshire police have now decided to take no further action due to insufficient evidence. And I'm delighted to say that businesswoman Bernadette Spofforth joins me now. Bernadette, welcome to the show. Uh, I want to ask you first and foremost what happened, because a lot of people watching may not be aware of the situation. But you, you tweeted something out that was considered quite inflammatory. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yes, I, um, I was quite distracted that day and obviously everybody was and they've been watching the news and I scrolled just for news on my phone under the term Southport and I'd seen a post of a guy whose children had been in in that particular class that day and I clicked that I scrolled again I saw a name in a sentence and I copied and pasted it and above it I put, if this is true, there will be hell to pay. Um, and posted it, put my phone down and went outside again. Now, I know that I did not source that tweet and had I given it 10 minutes more thought, I would have deleted it because I hadn't sourced it myself. But I went outside and I didn't come back to my phone for an hour or so. When I came back to my phone, I did immediately just delete it because I knew that I hadn't sourced that information for myself. And so that that's, was it, that's really. the question, isn't it, Bernadette? Because, of course, to say it, it's an asylum, se it's rumored to be an asylum seeker with this name, but this was completely false. A lot of people will say, well, you should have done due diligence. You've got a large account. Uh, do you accept that? Um, yes, I do, except you're immediately jumping to the line that my detractors jumped to. You see, for me, it was about the mental health excuse again. Again, you know, we, we hear this all the time. There's lots of attacks. A little girl was murdered last year. We had three people killed in a park. We had a soldier killed on the Friday. And what the press are reporting is this is a mental health issue. And I'm quite interested in local issues. I'm very interested in, in national issues, one of which is this constant issue about we don't have enough resources for mental health. And if you look at that, we had 150,000 institutional beds for mental health in the 80s, and now we have 17,000, but our, our population is 10 million people larger. So we definitely do not have the resources for people who are I don't know, asking for asylum here or coming here from traumatic circumstances, we can't look after them, which means the government can't look after us. Now, I appreciate that that wasn't how that post came across, and that's why I deleted it, as so, well as source the information. So let's be clear about that. So you've tweeted out uh, false information. It was a mistake. When you recognised yeah. that it was a mistake, you deleted the tweet. Uh, but by yes. that point, the police had got involved. Now... What happened then? The police, did they, uh, they visited you at that point, is that correct? No, for the next three or four days, there was this huge concerted effort on social media to um, engage the police. They wanted the police brought into this situation. And within 24 hours, there were newspaper articles, they, they all claimed I was guilty of sending this post first, of making up this information and inciting riots, which, of course, I didn't do. And you think you believe in the justice system. You know that if you don't do something, then, it, then you're innocent and, and it will be fine. But people didn't care about that. These, this huge pylon of people who perhaps didn't agree with me and people who didn't know me but wanted to blame me anyway – triggered this response from the press. And once the media had me in their sights, then the police, I think, were pressurised to act. And there's a big question here, because you had spent 36 hours in a cell uh, for saying something that wasn't correct. Well, a lot of people have said things that weren't correct. The head of Hope Not Hate 
put out a tweet around this time yeah. saying that Muslims were being uh, attacked with acid. That was completely false. I don't believe anyone's arrested him at this point. Uh, the BBC put out a report saying that the IDF were targeting medics at a hospital in Gaza. Completely false. They admitted their mistake and it was all wrong. And so isn't this a broader question about why are the police getting involved with human beings making mistakes about information which they later correct? Well, I think the cynical part of me would say that if you're not protected by the badge of journalism and you are just a normal person, but you have quite a large following, then you can be made an example of. And I think I was made an example of, you know, five, five police people turned up, three cars, a van. They came and they searched me. They dragged me off to the police station. They held me for 24 hours. And they had my devices. They could easily download what I'd done. It was quite obvious. All the information was there. All the evidence was there. But they then held me for another 12 hours. And still knowing that they had nothing because I'm really, honestly, on my devices, there are bonsai trees and dogs. <laughs> um, still knowing I hadn't done anything, they put me on bail. But extraordinarily, my bail condition was that I could not engage on social media at all. So I couldn't tell anyone what had happened. I couldn't defend myself. I couldn't reply to the press. I was completely silenced because they knew there but, was nothing. But you've had help from the Free Speech Union around this time, hadn't you? They were wonderful. Honestly, everybody should join the Free Speech Union because they were on the phone Immediately I was arrested to my husband. They provided, I already had a solicitor happily, but they provided solicitor help, barrister help. But not only that, Andrew, you know, there's other help you need. They have press specialists. And even more importantly than that, you know, my life was utterly destroyed. It has been utterly destroyed. And they provided psychologists, psychotherapy, people to just talk to you, help you balance what had happened, help you not drive off a bridge. Honestly, I, well, I Let me can't ask you about that because that. that's really important, isn't it? The, the, the fact that what, what this has done, uh, uh, this has changed your life, hasn't it, effectively? Uh, and going forward, it's going to be harder, isn't it, for you in all sorts of realms of life as a consequence of this action? You have to think about this really seriously, Andrew, and I would say that to everybody. The press and the authorities took a coach and horse through my democratic right to the presumption of innocence before proven guilty. They named me, they decided what I'd done, they decided why I'd done it, and they described me as this hideous person destroying my career and my reputation that I built for many, many years, just destroying it. And there's no comeback on that. I have to pick up the pieces, but I was innocent of what they were charging me of. How can that possibly ever be fair? And, and that's the big thing about free speech. They don't have to legislate about it. They don't have to stop you speaking. They just have to terrify you into not speaking because the process is the punishment. Absolutely. Well, Bernadette Spoffer, I really appreciate you coming on and telling your story. Thank you ever so much indeed. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Does calling a dog male, describing a dog as male, transphobic? Well, well just, Jeff, or, I mean... Or is it just part of the insanity that confused <laughs> this nation? <laughs> Jeff, why have you been describing dogs as male when they're not? Yeah. <laughs> Not me, not it's me, not, girl. No, not you. We, I, I mean, a number of us have been reading about this um, this week. We were talking about it on Headliners. <laughs> what it is, is there was a, a Zoom meeting. Uh, Stop at, it. Stop no, it. No, don't laugh. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Let Has somebody explain. given you acid? Let, what is happening? Let me, let me explain <laughs> the story first, and then we can react. Cambridge County Council, basically, there were employees on a Zoom. Someone had a dashened a sausage dog and described the dog as gender fluid. And another member, Lizzie Pitt, who was also an employee, expressed that she has gender-critical views uh, and doesn't recognise 
the gender identity of the dog. <laughs> and uh, this became a big legal battle. It apparently cost taxpayers about 63000 because the dog... No, the dog was called Pablo, right? <laughs> of course he was. Which I think is a... Gen they. Clear. There's Pablo there. Gender-neutral dachshund in a dress and a t what looks like a tiara. Anyway, uh, obviously a very flamboyant sausage dog. I don't take that away. <laughs> uh, but really, does this need... There's, there's the dachshund on a trans... <laughs> does the dog on a Zoom being misgendered or having someone else say that they don't recognise the idea of a gender-fluid dog. Does this need a big court case? Uh, I should say that the uh, social worker, Lizzie Pitt, they, she was reported, someone else was reported as well. They were deemed to be transphobic, non-inclusive, and the Employment Tribunal did conclude that Ms Pitt had been harassed for having gender-critical beliefs. She's been awarded over £55,000, £8,000 in legal cost. But why did it happen to begin with, Jojo? Why did... I'm not playing. I'm not playing. <laughs> I'm having nothing to do with I'm not playing. It's ridiculous. A gender-neutral dog. <laughs> stop it. Well, we can't stop it because it's news. Yeah, it's yeah no, happened. I know, but if we These don't... women were dragged through the, the courts for this. How do we stop this? Seriously. I I, come on. Oh, it does... Do <laughs> we all feel that we're on some kind of trip? That some, something's not... I can't yeah, bear it. Try hosting this show for three years. Oh, my God! <laughs> After a while, you start thinking you're Did, in the twilight what zone. What date is it? Is it the 1st of April? It is okay. not. It is not. Well, the thing is, Paul, I'm continually feeling like JoJo is, is that at some point you just think, the lunacy has got to end, people have got to wake up. We, we shouldn't be having sense... We shouldn't be having discussions about gender-neutral dashings. We absolutely shouldn't. I'm glad we do, because I've got bills to pay. But, uh, <laughs> sure. uh, it's ridiculous. There should be at least one JoJo or one Andrew in that whole process. It should never get to the point where it goes to court and we're talking to tens of thousands of pounds. No. Somebody at some point should go, this is ridiculous, or go back to school yeah. and yeah. behave yourselves. The other thing, of course, is... Go to your room. Exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole thing about the trans ideology debate is it's about self-identification. Do you see that dog? It looks entirely embarrassed by the situation. <laughs> that dog has not identified itself as anything other than... It was probably called Dave. And all of a sudden, he's now Pablo and wearing a dress. And he's there going, what is all this about? There's no way that that dog identifies as, as gender fluid. <laughs> just, no just, way. Just well, because... probably when it's having a pee, it's fluid. <laughs> but apart from that, I'm just... I. No, it's ridiculous. Right, well, there, anyway, it's a very cute dog. Uh, very a, cute yeah, dog. Very and cute. actually, I'm going to get social services involved and have them take him off him. Yeah. Well, it's quite an extreme reaction, but maybe. <laughs> By the way, we, sh we, should, we have to give a right to reply. The uh, council spokesperson oh. has said this. We strive to create a safe, inclusive and compassionate environment for people to work in and recognise this needs to be balanced with everyone being entitled <laughs> to express their own views and beliefs. We will reflect carefully on this final outcome as well as undertake a review of our policies and procedures accordingly. That's the council statement on their gender <laughs> <laughs>